Hi viewers, welcome back. In today's video, we are going to discuss the continuation of the nursing process regarding implementation and evaluation. See, we have already discussed about the assessment part, the diagnostic part that is like your uh, nursing diagnosis formulation, the planning part. Okay, so, now we are going to discuss about the implementation and the evaluation. So, till planning we have done. Now, what we have to do it in the implementation part. See, uh, planning we have a set of planned uh, nursing care or procedures we have planned that we have written in the nursing care plan. Now, we are going to implement whatever we have planned. So, in that you will have steps to be followed. Okay. So, first one is reassessing. So, you have planned. So, by the time you start with your implementation, you have to do a reassessment on the patient. So, that is like uh, any uh, variations with the respiratory rate, any variations with the pain level, how is this anxiety, whether he can tolerate the nursing care, whether whether there must be a change in the plan, all those things you have to do an reassessment. Okay. Then comes the need for assistance that is like you will be having a set of procedures. So, now we have discussed uh, the last uh, problem like ineffective airway clearance. Okay. So, ineffective airway clearance at that time we have discussed about nebulization, um, steam inhalation, oxygen administration, position modification and all those things we have discussed. So, in case if you want to have an assistant, if you want to have an health of an, uh, an axillary midwife, so you can take the help of a uh, nursing assistant okay so who can help you in your procedures and then comes the implementation of the plan so whatever you have planned that you have to start implement okay so usually i tell the uh, students like never go in for writing um, provide 6 liters of oxygen provided 6 liters of oxygen not like that so it is not like your present tense and past tense like that you will change so whatever you are doing for the patient that you have to write. You have planned for 6 liters of oxygen, but there is no need for 6 liters. With 4 liters only, the patient is able to tolerate. He is having 99 percent saturation. So, what you have to do? So, here in planning, you would have written plan 6 liters of oxygen, administer 6 liters of oxygen. But in the implement part, what has happened? So, you are administering only 4 liters of oxygen. So, you will write as administered 4 liters of oxygen to the patient so that you will be writing ok. So, in case if you have planned for nebulization, so you have written nebulization, salbutamol nebulization every 8 hourly to be given you have written ok. But implementation part the patient has gone for a uh, CT or uh, MRI or some procedures ok. So, the patient has not come back. So, what you have to do? So, you will plan you will again you will have a modification in the implementation you will write nebulization every 12th hourly given like that you have to modify. So, accordingly whatever you are implementing that only you have to write not writing the present tense and past tense. Okay. So, never do that mistake it is always whatever you are doing for the patient that has to be returned in the implementation column. Okay. Then comes the supervising the delegated care. So, now we have said like um, we are going to give uh, steam inhalation for the patient. Okay. So, steam inhalation now you have asked your assistant to give steam inhalation. So, now it is supervisory role. So, you have to see whether the assistant is giving uh, steam inhalation to the patient or not. So, how long she is giving, whether she is giving in the correct position, whether she is following the correct techniques or the rational uh, procedure is done all these things you have to do. So, supervising the care that is provided for the patient and then comes the documentation. So, whatever you have done for the patient everything you have to document. Okay. So, whatever so oxygen 4 liters administered, nebulization every 12th hourly administered, uh, steam inhalation provided, uh, then uh, salbutamol uh, nebulization given. So, like that you have to document whatever is done for the patient. So, finally, then only it is easy for you to go in for evaluation. Okay. So, always document whatever is done. So, implementation part you must always remember this 5 areas of reassessment, 
need for assistance implementation of the plan supervising the delegated care and documentation ok. So, with this we complete implementation. So, evaluation. So, whatever we have done to the patient ok. So, you have done lot of nursing care you have provided. Now, you have to check whether this is working out for the patient whether the patient is improving or not all these nursing care is making the patient to become better or not that you have to assess. How can how it can be done? It can be done only by evaluation. So, you have to evaluate the nursing care that is provided ok. So, first is the collect data related to the outcome. So, what are the data you have to uh, collect? We have seen the complaint was altered that is what is ineffective breathing pattern we have seen ok. So, if it is like that. So, what will be the data related to the respiratory rate, the saturation level, then the raising of the chest walls these are the data that is related with the outcome. So, that you have to assess. So, you have to write the patient saturation is improved it is 98, 96 like that and then uh, the patient is uh, uh, respiratory status is normal that is like the patient is having a respiratory rate of 28, 30 like that and then what you have to write uh, the patient is having normal breathing that is like chest breathing only is done no intercostal breathing, diaphragmatic breathing nothing is present. So, all these things will be written and then comes the comparing the data with the desired outcome. So, desired outcome is like you remember planning in planning we have written the desired outcome that is like the patient saturation will be improved the uh, tachypnea will come down like that you would have had a desired outcome. So, your planned outcome will be there. So, now you have to check whether your evaluation and the desired outcome is meeting. So, everything is coming to a correct level. So, whether you are able to fulfill the nursing outcome that you have to check then relate the nursing activities to the outcome. So, in case if it is not adequate. So, now the saturation is only 90. So, now what you have to do? You have to see whether whatever you have planned that is implemented or not. So, whether something is pending or not that you have to assess then continuing modifying or terminating the care. So, now you have to decide. So, now your implementation is over, your reassessment is over. So, now you have to decide whether you have to continue or not. So, now continuation of care what you have to do? Whether you have to continue oxygen at 4 liters or not, whether you have to continue nebulization at 12 hours or 8 hourly you have to see when whether you have to continue with steam inhalation or not all these things you have to think about. If the patient condition has improved you need not continue you can discontinue the treatment because the patient has improved. In case if the patient is improving you have to continue with the care. So, little more you need to achieve the target. So, little more you have to continue and in case if the patient is becoming sick he is not responding to your treatment. So, what will happen? You have to discontinue. So, you have to terminate the care and you have to put the patient on a CPAP or a ventilator according to the demand of the patient ok. So, this is the way you have to take a problem, assess, diagnose, plan, implement and you have to evaluate and you have to see whether you have to continue with the care or not ok. So, if you are going to see this video I tell you please go back to the video from the beginning of assessment planning of uh, assessment diagnosis planning and then come to this implementation and evaluation. So, that it will be like a series you will be able to understand the nursing process completely. In case if you have any doubts kindly comment in the comment box I will reply you ok. So, now you can ask me ma'am what are the set of nursing diagnosis ok. Nothing to worry take any of your fundamental books and see for nursing diagnosis even you can google you can see for the list of nursing diagnosis you will have the set of listing nursing list of nursing diagnosis. So, whichever is applicable for your patient whichever problem is present for your patient that nursing diagnosis you take and you have to write same wise you have to modulate according to your patient condition you have to modulate that is like risk for anxiety risk for depression risk for faults all these all things like that you have to modify and you have to write according to your 
patient need okay so hope this nursing process you have understood in case if you have any doubt kindly give me um, questions or like kindly give your comments in the comment box okay take care bye